Hi there, Sam from Enable here, and today's video is going to be the webinar that we hosted in November on how to get the most out of Monday.com CRM solution. It was hosted by the Head of Professional Services here for Monday.com in Alex, and he's gonna take you through all of the best ways to get the most out of the product. But if you have any further questions that you'd like to ask regarding this, please don't hesitate to leave us a comment in the comments below, or get in touch with us using the links in the description. Take it away, Alex. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for attending the webinar um, with us, Enable.Services. I want to do a very quick introduction about who we are and about who I am, uh, just so you know that you're speaking to someone who you might know a little bit of what they're talking about. So my name is Alex Fry. Um, I am the manager of professional services here at Enable.Services. We are a family-run company in Suffolk. We um, are based in a lovely little part of the world in Martlesham. And what we have been doing with Monday.com is we've been working very closely with them as a partner uh, since 2017, 2018, for so quite a few years. Um, we've been working in license acquisition and supporting with licensing. Also, um, a part of our job is professional services and helping people build systems that they uh, need to build in Monday.com. Um, before Monday.com was really a, a separate sectioned uh, product where you had like CRM and projects, work management and dev and what have you. We actually uh, built CRMs um, without sort of that sort of starting point. And it's really encouraging to see uh, monday.com create a section all for CRM. But what we found with a lot of our feedback is that it's not really exactly what we need it to be. Uh, there might need to be some tweaks and some changes and people are really afraid of making those changes. So it's been our job to step in and show them that the base product is fantastic, but what you can actually do with it and how you can improve it to suit your needs um, can also be fundamentally pretty great as well. Um, so that's what we're gonna be doing today. We're gonna be looking at the sales CRM product in uh, monday.com and we're gonna be seeing some improvements we can make towards it and uh, exactly what we can do to get the best out of the CRM side of Monday.com. We'll be showing you some of the, uh, the different um, ways we can use the CRM, the different features of it, but we'll also be showing you where if your workflow might be different in some fundamental ways of structure, how you can change it yourself and how you can um, shift the product accordingly to suit the needs of your business. Of course, that being said, if you need any help after the uh, webinar and you might need some support with uh, some of these fundamental changes we will be making, um, you can contact us. There will be uh, a link at the end of the webinar and on social media to get in touch with us for a free one hour consultation with one of our account managers and a technical consultant, someone from the consultancy team like myself, uh, to chat about what you're using Monday.com for. And it could be outside of CRM and how we can help and how we can change it for you. Thank you for that spiel. I'd like to quickly give a very good thanks to some of my panelists today. We have uh, Sam O'Hara, who heads up a lot of our Monday.com marketing here at Enable.Services, who's going to be helping you with any questions that you might have in the chat. And we also have Louis Hargreaves, who is one of our consultants. He's a part of our consultancy team, and he works very closely with me building the uh, exact system that people want to see. So thanks to both of them. And we do encourage you to put in your questions throughout this session as we go through. And uh, I'll be made aware of those questions coming up. Uh, I'll take a pause and uh, I'll be answering some of them that might uh, come up. The way we're going to start is actually I'm going to introduce you to the uh, product and show you exactly what um, it indeed will look like. Um, so what we have here is our CRM part of Monday.com. And what I'm going to do is show you the different boards that come with the product as a whole. If you guys um, have any idea about sales CRM and Monday.com, as soon as you set up the uh, section of the workspace, you get a few keyboards uh, ready to begin your sort of workflow within the CRM space. We have a leads board, we have a deals board and a contacts board. Um, an accounts board activities, and we also have a dashboard as well. And this is a great array of uh, basic functionality we would expect within a CRM built within the infrastructure of monday.com. Um, let's go through each board and give you a highlight of what exactly they do and how you can use them in your workflow. And then we'll go through the different changes that you might make to this system that can improve it and get it to that 
very next level. First, what we're going to look at is our leads board. Now, our leads board is where we first input information according to um, a company that we've been speaking to and to a contact within that company. We find a lot of smaller businesses really confuse what they do with leads. And uh, we have a lot of people that fill in leads as maybe a person or perhaps an account. And it entirely depends if you're a B2B or a B2C business. But it's it's very crucial that you keep that format going forward. Is your lead an account? Are you talking to a company as a whole and selling to a company? Or is your lead a, a, a person? You can have a mix in monday.com, but it's rather important that you try and keep that format going forward because that really drives the heart of uh, how we store the data in the monday.com sales CRM. So in this lease boards, we have very basic information. We've got a status to know where our leads are at the moment. We've currently got new leads and we've got different status labels we can add, attempted to contact, contacted, qualified, um, unqualified. Uh, we can add our own labels here if we needed to. We could add, uh, let's say, what's a nice color? It's a black label. Let's say um, uh, call in three months. And if you've got this thing where your sales cycle was a particularly long time and maybe people go very quiet uh, for a certain amount of time, we work with a an events company that through the events calendar were very busy during some parts of the year, but very quiet during others. So when their new lead, leads came in, they wanted to log them, but they wanted a reminder three months into the future. And we can touch upon how you can use um, automations and status labels to give reminders about uh, calls that might come up at future times. So we could create our own custom labels there. We've got a button that comes with monday.com, uh, creating a contact, we'll be going over how that works in a bit. Important information that we need to co uh, capture, we've got an email address, we've got a title, we've got a company, and we've got a phone number. Now, when it comes to these uh, columns, we have a lot of people that come in here and go, well, we don't, you know, we don't really, when we have, an email address we don't call it email address we call it contact email we call it you know mobile phone because we only talk to people on you know mobile phone we want a separate one for the office phone or what have you and we don't call it company we want to call it account it's very important to remember that everything in monday.com sales serum that you generate um, is freely editable um, i know a lot of people have asked us and they go well it's not exactly what we want we can change it and we can say that this is contact email we can change the title of this and we can say this is position Position, there we go. Company, we can change to account. Phone number, we can change to mobile if we want to. What that also allows us to do is move these columns and shift them accordingly where we might need them to be. So we're capturing all that information in the lead board. And the whole idea of the leads board is that they're unqualified, it's just contact information. And we're trying to get to the next step of actually generating a deal for that lead. That moves us to our next board, the deals board. Now, with the deals board, when it comes to writing out deals, this is where a lot of companies vary in their actual sales process. Um, do you just have deals? The deals are then one. Do you have opportunity uh, stages? So you get a deal to an opportunity. And we'll be talking, actually, about how we can evolve um, the opportunities as well and make an actual separate opportunity board. Perfect. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go through and create a new deal, deal number one. This deal can have an owner, so we know who it's assigned to. Uh, we can connect it to a contact. We can connect it to a stage. We can give it a particular deal value. And hopefully some people here might be working in that. But in the UK, we work to uh, quids or pounds. So we can change this to pounds rather than, than dollars. And we've got a close date when that deal was closed, which is the very basic information we would expect for a deal. Now, there are a lot of people that work under the assumption that we can actually generate deals, um, we can prospect just for leads. In the sales CRM, the idea is that you create deals against your, your contacts instead. So we actually connect to our contacts board rather than connecting to our leads board. So for instance, we could connect this deal to Faye, for example. So we have a deal not against a lead, but against a contact. So the idea of this workflow is actually what you do is you uh, confirm that you're going to have a deal with a client. You create a deal in here. You actually go back to the leads. And let's say that this deal actually came in for someone new. 
And let's say this is for Rebecca. What I'm going to do is I'm going to um, send Rebecca to the contacts board by hitting this useful button, move to contacts. Hit this button here. What that's going to do is actually it's going to take the item from the leads board and the automation has told me in the bottom right, we're going to move it to the contacts board with a quick button press. We go to contacts and Rebecca will be here at the bottom. She's just moved in and some of her information has come in as well. As you can see, we don't have any deals connected to these contacts. So what we can do when we're in the deals board, we know that this is a deal for Rebecca. We can actually go in here. We can find Rebecca. We could scroll all the way down if we wanted to. I'm actually going to find her by searching, by typing, and then connect her to this deal. So now that I can see that for deal one, Rebecca is the contact. And if I go into the contacts board by this uh, two-way connect to board column, I can see that deal one is assigned to Rebecca as well. And they're intrinsically linked. And we're going to be talking about the visibility of data linking the sales CRM as well, because that's something a lot of people don't realize the power of Monday.com sales CRM. They look at it as basic Monday.com, but actually uh, it's got a lot more functionality uh, than it actually does here. So that's good. So let's move on into our contacts board. So what I'm going to do, quickly hide that, that's for later. Um, we have um, our contacts board, and it's basically just pulling through the contact information we got within the leads. And our contacts are in the contacts board because we have an active deal with them. You know, there's going to be an opportunity, there's going to be a project or something assigned to them. So we only convert our leads to contacts once they are viable in terms of from a business standpoint. Um, so this is where our contacts live, and they live there simply from a button press from the leads board. What we'll talk about is how we can make that a bit more automated in the flow. What this also allows us to do is it allows us to connect to our accounts board as well. So for instance, for Faye, for example, Faye's account, if we've got our account record in here, let's see, she was a part of uh, HSBF, for example, or maybe she was a part of a new account. Let's say Faye was a part of uh, Phoenix Enterprises. Sounds like a cool name. What I can do in this board is actually I can quickly add that record by typing in, searching for it. It's not there. I'm actually going to add a new account. So I'm going to hit add new account. Now we've connected Phoenix Enterprises. And if I go into the accounts board, Phoenix Enterprises now sits there with uh, Rebecca in the, with Faye, for, for example, in the contacts. So if I go back to the account, uh, the contacts, got Phoenix Enterprises in here. Rebecca as well. Let's add Rebecca to Phoenix as well. Perfect. Again, it's all this interconnectivity. It's all following the route of this information. Uh, a lead goes into a contact. We have an active deal. And that active deal is not only connected to the contact itself. It's also connected to the account against the contact. As you can see, what I'm doing is I've got Faye and I've got Rebecca connected to Phoenix. And I can see that deal one is actually connected up to the accounts record because it's pulling through from the contacts record. So we've got a mirror here showing us our deals. Forgive me, not mirror. This is a connected to ball column, bringing us our deals. And then in the accounts record, we are mirroring that connected to ball column and seeing the deal at the very top level. On a table view, this is really good. What we'll be talking about is actually the overview of the sales CRM and how you can see everything interconnected in a much better way. Our final board we need to talk about is the activities board. This is gonna look very uh, slim for the moment. What we'll be doing throughout the session is we are going to be um, adding uh, more contacts into here and making sure that we are happy with uh, more activities into here, making sure that we're happy with the interconnectivity uh, when we have all of that connected together. So that's what we're going to be doing. So first off, let's go to our leads. And let's have a look about what we're doing here when it comes to leads and contacts, because there is a, a definite struggle that some people sometimes have when it comes to leads and activities, where they they don't understand where their leads sort of 
where their leads go after they're completed. Do we move the item into a contact? Do we add the item into a contact? Do we convert the lead into a deal rather than a contact? How people use monday.com for their CRM varies massively in terms of uh, what they do and, and, and don't do and what they do and don't use it for. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to show you the two different ways and what's the, the good and bad ways of it. Because at the moment, what Monday is doing is that it is allowing us by a button press to be able to um, automatically create, a, a move the leads to a contact, which is really good. And there's plus sides for that as well. So for instance, let's say Jesse, and I've got a lot of conversations with Jesse in the updates and I'm writing conversations and I'm adding other people. So I could add Louie and I can say, can you uh, check up with Jesse next week? Now, as salespeople, it's really important that you have somewhere to do internal notes. And if you guys know monday.com, the updates panel is a perfect place for internal notes, keeping track of what's been going on and what's been happening. And if I've got a lot of updates against Jesse, and I've got a lot of files that I might put in here, or I might put in checkboxes to, you know, do this, do that, do the other thing. And I'm keeping all my organization into the updates against Jesse. I don't want to lose that. And the great thing about when you move a contact, you're moving an item in monday.com, you're kind of transplanting it elsewhere. Let me just move my Zoom window, there we go. If I now move Jesse and I click move to contacts, the great thing about that is that you it will move to the contacts board and the conversations I had will move along with it. So those updates will remain. So I always recommend that if people are gonna move from leads to contacts, what you are going to want to do is you're going to want to um, make sure that you move the item rather than create. For instance, if I get to the point in a lead and I want to keep leads in here because I want to count the qualified leads or report on the qualified leads, which is what you would like to do, and you want to keep the leads in there for that exact purpose, what you can do is you can create an automation to say, I'm going to create instead. And I can say that when the lead status changes to qualified, for example, what I'd like to do is create an item in a board. So I'd like to create an item in the contacts board. It feels a little bit like doubling up, but what this is allowing me to do is that, let's see, I've got my phone number here. Let me put my mobile in. I'll put my email is called contact email, map those in. So what I'm doing is I'm creating a new item in the contacts board, which is fine. You can do that. And a lot of our customers do do that. But once they do, for instance, let's say I've been talking about me. This is a great opportunity having some internal discussions and making sure everyone knows. Let's add a little bit of flair to it. And let's put dancing in here. Yeah, lovely job. This is a great opportunity. And this is a really important internal note. We want to make sure that the sales team um, have the notes in a centralized place and they, that history carries forward. If I now change this to qualified, what I'm going to do instead of moving to contacts, I'm going to create an item in the contacts board. So I've still got it in here and I can now report on my qualified leads and when they were qualified and what have you. And I, I've still got my understanding of leads as, as, as they are today, even though this qualified lead won't continue on, but as they are today, if I now go into my contacts board and Lee is now in there, the updates are missing. And it's not that they're missing, is that they exist back on the leads, uh, back on the leads item, not on the contact item. We can't map those updates over. So we find that really, really tough where that if you need to create another item in another board, make sure that the item that you're leaving is where the conversation ends. It's really important that's where the conversation ends. Otherwise, you're going to start to lose the trail of what's been spoken about unless you jump back to the other item, which isn't a big burden, but it's the way that Monday works. Updates exist on the item in that specific board. And the sales CRM is built around the fact that you want to keep that conversation on. You want to move that lead into the contacts board once it's ready. Whatever that step might look for you, whether there is an opportunity available or if there is a new deal, 
that is entirely um, up to you guys. But whatever that step is, you can automate it in some way. It doesn't need to be a button press. We could say once status changes to qualified, we can then move the item into the contacts board. In terms of the lead board, what we really like to do in Monday.com is we like to get the reporting as a sales team in the sales dashboard. And the sales dashboard is really great because it gives you a lot of um, breakdown of what your numbers might look like, what's currently in the pipeline and what have you. One thing that we found that a lot of people were asking for actually is the idea of counting your leads. The idea of like when the leads came in and when the leads were won. Now, when it comes to when your leads came in, Monday.com has a very uh, robust activity log. And I did all these via an Excel import. So what we should see is that actually all of our leads kind of came in at the same time, about four hours. There we go. Um, actually, less than that, we created them via yesterday, about 22 hours ago, we created all of these leads. But that is in the back end. That's the audit trail of Monday.com. We want to be able to report on that. And the thing is with Monday, it's important that any data you want to report on actually exists in the board itself. So what we would, could do is actually we could create um, a date column that we can then automate and can populate with the creation date of the lead. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to the more columns. I'm going to add a date. And I'm going to call this um, lead added. So this is the lead added date. And with Monday's automation suites, that isn't just limited to what you get in the CRM, you can build on top of it. We can actually build an automation and easily say that when an item is created, we can find that going down. When an item is created, we would like to set the date to today, which is set date to today. And we set the lead added date to today. Perfect. So now if we create a new lead, and let's say, let's take Louis for example. I believe Louis is going to be our main example in this webinar. Once I put in him as a new lead, it's now automatically populated today as the, uh, the date that he came in. Now, if I have multiple dates for all these that came in, let's say these came in in October, all on the same day. Let's say these came in in August, for example. And we got one or two that also came in today or around this week, this month, rather. Uh, let's have one in September. And let's have one all the way back in June. So when I build my uh, reporting around that and I want to see when leads came in and I build things in the sales dashboard or I build it in the leads reporting uh, the space, if I build a blank view, I can then figure out when my leads came in by grabbing myself a bar chart changing this to uh, see the x-axis and change our date to the lead added column. So now immediately, I've got a count of when these leads came in. One in June, 13th of August, 1st in September, 6th in, Oct 6th in October, and 3 in November. So it's important that when you have a consideration for your reporting, and we say this time and time again when building Monday.com, always think about the data you want to get out of the system. And that will that will influence the building requirements you have as you go through and build monday.com. Do I want a reports of like when our leads came in? Do I want reports of when they were qualified and what have you? That will dictate actually the structure that you build in monday.com. It's important that if you want to report on it in the board, it should exist in the board. So that can count the leads per month, or we could build that to weeks or what have you. So that's, that's quite useful. If we have a situation where we are moving the item into contacts once we actually have a deal and it's qualified and you want to count on the amount of um, the amount of leads that are qualified, by that merit, the leads that are qualified are actually the contacts you create. Once you create a contact by the merit of the CRM, that's when the lead is qualified. So what you want to say is date column. We want to automate. Let's actually rename it first and let's say uh, qualified. We could call it qualified or we could say contact created. It means the same sort of thing in this system. And we can say when an item is moved to this board, 
The same thing again, we're going to say set date to today. Qualified. Perfect. Now what we can do is that if we're in the leads board and we are qualifying these leads, we're making sure we get qualified, good. Uh, Vanda is also qualified. We want to create a contact. And Brian is also qualified. Let's say uh, Vernon as well. So we've now qualified four leads. We've moved them into the contacts board. If I now go into the contacts board, I look down at the very bottom here. We have four new contacts that have been set to today's date because they've been qualified for today. And if we add a few more here, there we go. Add them here, October. Let's go back to July. And for fun, why don't we just add a few in September? And let's do one in April. Everyone loves a bit of April. Now what I'd like to do is to see per date where my leads are. You know, how many did we uh, get in a certain month? How many did we qualify? What we can do is we can actually create a dashboard like we have in the sales dashboard. In fact, we could use the sales dashboard and show you how we can actually edit it going forward. Let me connect it to deals. Uh, that's only for deals. Let's create our own and actually look at everything. Let's create a new dashboard and add it to, uh, let's call it leads reporting. Good job. We're going to add our leads board and we're going to add our contacts board. Now, we're doing exactly the same thing that we just did. We're actually looking into our, um, our boards and then creating a bar chart. But this time, we're actually having a bit more of a view over the two boards. So let's do the bar chart. Let's do our uh, date column. And then we're looking in qualified, in contacts, and leads in lead added. And actually, what we can do... If we go into uh, our stacked, we can actually stack it by the board. So now we know how many leads we created every month and how many contacts we created every month, i.e. how many leads were qualified. And we can have a count of that. Can we uh, expand that? There we go. So for April, we can see we got one contact created, so we qualified a lead. We had uh, one lead being created. Uh, we had a contact being created. We had 10 leads being created in August. So we get an immediate picture of how our sales pipeline is look and what a conversion is, like how many we get versus how many we, um, we had brought in. So if you need that sort of function in money.com, do you see how we've added a few simple columns into boards? We've added a few date columns. And from that, we've actually got a very uh, keen piece of reporting that we can then use to understand uh, where we are in that sort of process. And if there's any other piece of reporting that you're finding difficult in the CRM um, section in monday.com, please leave me uh, a message or, you know, uh, in the Q&A, and we can go over it as a use case in the session. That's what this session is for. Our deals board. Our deals board seems very, uh, very good, but it, it does require a little bit of manual entry. What we can do is actually we can make the deals board a lot more automated. And what it requires is a few more text columns and the understanding of how we can um, automatically create things and automatically connect things. So, for example, if we always want to create a new deal when we convert a contact, for example, and we, we move a, uh, a lead into a contact, what we'd like to do at the same time is actually create a deal. Because at the moment, manually, what we're doing is we're just doing deal two. There we go. And then we're finding the relevant contact, which is fine. But let's say as soon as we get a new deal, we would like to create a new contact. And here's where we're going to be talking about one of the key features in Monday Sales CRM. And then at the end, we're going to be tying it all together to show you how those connections are rather important. With every new deal that comes in, we connect to contact or contacts. You can have multiple for one deal if you're talking to multiple people at one company. However, if we're converting a lead to a deal, we want to also create a, a 
a lead to a contact rather. We want to create a deal at the same time and we'd like to connect them. Monday.com can do that for you. So to create a contact at the moment, what we're doing is we are just clicking to move to the deals board. Forgive me, to the contacts board. Getting all mixed up with deals and contacts and what have you. So what we want to say is that when something is moved in here, I'd like to automatically create a deal. So what I'm going to say is when an item is moved into this board, there we go, we want to create an item in another board and connect the boards together. Good thing is we already have a column for that. So I want to create something new in the deals board. Create an item. I could even name it after this, and I can say the contact name will be the thing. We call it new deal. Uh, stage it doesn't really matter we don't really need to put the stage in here but leave it for now uh deal value we want to put that in and close date we can put that in manually as well we want to connect in both boards and we want to connect it or is it just if we do the deals column sorry let's for this purpose let's connect it in the deals board and because it's uh it's mirrored back into here, we should be able to see it anyway. So we're connecting in the deals board. We're saying once the deal is created, connect it in there and connect it back to the contact, which is what we want to do. Lovely job. So let's give it a try. Let's go back to leads and let's say, ah, uh, do Melinda, for example. We've got a new deal ready for Melinda. I want to now convert her from a lead into a, a contact move to the contacts board and what that will do is Lin Melinda should pop in here connect the two together doesn't mean I can't disconnect this and move it to someone else doesn't mean I can't add more people keep clicking the actual name that's better I can add more people in here if I need to but it starts us off a bit easier and when you add automations to each one of these individual steps it saves you a lot of time in the long run so that's good. What I wanted to say with this is that what we're doing is we're connecting for our contact and we're doing so via an item connection. And that's great. If we're connecting, if we're connecting a deal because we're creating a new deal, that's fantastic. But Monday.com also has a really useful feature that the CRM um, doesn't at the moment make much use of, but we will see it a lot more as we uh, build out. And that's the idea of match automations. And this has become pretty sort of revolutionary for us in enable.services when we work with people uh, in monday.com. Because originally, the only way you could connect two items automatically is via creation. And sometimes you don't want to create something. You just want the two items to match. So what you can actually do is let's make a use case, for example, and let's have a look and say, um, whenever we create a new contact, what we want to do is that we want to connect the account. Now, in this Monday.com board, we have the accounts as a connect to board column. And in the accounts board, let's say we're going to get enabled of services. It's a new account. I think that's in there. That's good to go. Now, the way match automations work is that if you have a trigger, and it could be a status change, it could be a column change, it could be um, a, when you move an item, or even if you do create an item, you can also do a match as well. What we want to do is we want to say that when a new contact comes in, we'd like to match it and actually connect the account. The way we would need to do that is we would need to create a text column because Monday needs a way of referencing what the account name is. So I'm going to do accounts name. Some people might think this is doubling up, but the text column is used for the matching and the connect to board column is featured in connecting all that information together in an overview. So that's important for us to sort of understand that that connection needs to be there along with the text column. So if I go to the leads board and I've got my account in here, so we've got Louis and he works at enable.services. I want to make sure that when I hit that create a contact, we actually move the item into the contacts board and the account name matches the account as well. Let's update this automation. Good, lovely job. 
What this allows us to do is that when Louis comes into the contacts, we're actually going to connect the account automatically. Because if I had to do it manually, I'd have to go in here and I click the account. And if I'm dealing with a lot of contacts or a lot of leads on, on one time in, you know, in one board, then what we would want it to do is that the system do it automatically for us. We don't have to worry about it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find a match automation that's going to work for me. So let's say, what do we want to do? We could say maybe when column changes, because when this comes in here, let's set our priority to low, which could be a nice little column change for us to something. Let's change this to good. Oh, not state has changed something. What am I doing? Oh, it's moved. In fact, we could actually do it with the um with the qualified date. And we wouldn't need to change the the uh the status, would we? Because we could do it with the qualified date. So let's use that instead, because we're always going to want that qualified date. We need something to trigger this match automation. And let's do it when the qualified date changes. So let's say that we when the column changes, connect the item where this column matches another column in another board by this logic. Good. What is our column change? Well, we want it to be our qualified date. When an item is moved to this board, the qualified date is set to the day for our reporting purposes. That can then trigger our connection. And what we're looking at is what column are we looking at in this board, in the uh, contacts board? Well, we're looking at the account name text column. What other board are we looking at? We're looking at the accounts board and another column. Well, we're looking at the name in the accounts board because the item name is the account name. They match. Perfect. And then I want to connect them in the accounts connect accounts connect to board column. Perfect. So the account name will come through automatically because we've grabbed it in the lead stage. We've written the account name down. We know what it is because we've been talking to the customer. We put the uh, account name in. What I'm going to do is I'm going to move Louis is I'm going to move Louis into the uh, contacts board by, oh, I just need to make sure that we've got the logic, which is fine. We don't really need to worry about that too much, but that's good. We're going to move Louis into the contacts board. Let's try and be quick about this. So Louis is going to now be a contact. Click and move. Go into the contacts. Louis Hargreaves should appear at the bottom. The account name has come through. And what we should see is money.com is creating a deal for us and connecting enable.services. Because I've literally told it, when something changes, what I want you to do is go into the accounts board, go and look for the account name, and then connect it. The current system we have at the moment in these boards is that you capture the account name at the lead stage. And when you go to the contact stage, that text column just disappears. We've got it. That's all good. Then you go and create an account manually, which is fine. But if we have the account name in here and something moves in here, first off, we'll know if the account already exists. So if I get another lead and I call it myself and I work for enable.services, that's the position, there we go. Monday wizard, there we go. I do, I do like that name. If I hit move to contacts, I'll appear in the contacts board at the bottom and I'm gonna connect to enable.services because that's the uh, that's the uh, name of my account. Seems like it's playing a little bit of an invisibility thing. There we go. There's my name. So it's come through. It's connected to the account. However, if we have a new lead, and let's say it's uh, Bobby at Empath, for instance, Bobby at Empath. If I go move to contacts, we're going to create a contact in here. And Bobby will come in from the new leads board. Come on, Bobby, you take your time. There he is, a little bit slow. What it's done, it's tried to match for an account that's in the accounts board, but the account doesn't exist. So now we know that we haven't spoken to this account before. So what I can do, I can click here and I can go, uh, yeah, empath, just to make sure they're not there. Let's just add a new account. Empath, good, and we've connected it. And now, later on, if we're talking to another leader, Empath, called Sharon 
Richards, and she's with Empath. And we hit move to contacts. Sharon is now going to come in. Her account name is going to be Empath, same as Bobby. And because her account name is Empath, and the Empath account now exists, what it's going to do is it's going to go to the accounts board and check for the Empath con uh, account we're going to find, and it's going to connect, as you can see, and it's going to connect Sharon in here. There she is. We just wait for money.com and our connection. If we go into the accounts, we should be able to see it. Bobby, and we should see Sharon as well. Pretty odd. Let's give it another trigger, another fire. And then dot com's had a bit of a cough. Should find empath. There we go. Should find empath, and then it should connect to Sharon, which is good. So now for the account for empath, we have two contacts. We have two contacts at Naval. We have two contacts at Phoenix. And we can see all the deals connected to it as well. So those are match automations, and they're really important. And Monday.com, as its basic level on the CRM, doesn't come with text columns to put in the account name or the contact name. So you could automatically match the deal and automatically match the account. And that's because... It's important that you get to choose the account and put it in and then put it in for data entry. But if you want to save yourself that time of having to put that detail in over and over again, you can create uh, a match automation that will uh, look at the account name, it will look at the deal name, or look at the contact name, and it will connect them automatically. Match automations are really useful, and it's really important that we do have those connections built in between the uh, different boards so that we can then look at um, how those connections can actually feed data in between them. Just having a bit of a drink there. Lovely job. Just want to make sure we check the chat as well and make sure we're keeping up with everything. Good. So what we want to do now is look at why it's so important to have those connections. Like it's really, really crucial that we keep those connections uh, close to our mind because Monday.com really thrives in the CRM space when we work through those uh, connections. So let's look at the leads. So when you open up any of the items in the Monday.com uh, CRM section, what you should see is that one of the basic views is actually the uh, item level view or the item card view that Monday.com has made bespoke for the CRM. So it will be in overview. And this is a really, really great view. We can see um, our lead stages and where we need to go to and how we move things. Lovely job. Louise, thank you for your question. Um, is it possible to link to accounts that are set up on another cloud database, uh, uh, such as a NetSuite ERP? Um, that's a really good question. In terms of connecting to other accounts, when we talk about connecting in Monday.com, we're kind of talking about the, the idea of linking them via uh, connect to board columns. So it's board to board. The best way I would recommend for you to do it is probably that if you have your accounts in something like NetSuite ERP, what you could do is you could create a link column. So if I go to the uh, accounts board or let's say the contacts board and you don't even want an accounts board, you just want a link to the account in NetSuite, what you can do is you can actually have a link column in here, uh, create a link here. And in this link, we can say uh, this is the account is called, uh, this is HS. B, F, and then that's the text to display, Alex. You've done it in the wrong place. There we go. And then you can put the link to the uh, NetSuite URL in there. So once you click in, that will take you to, assuming you're using online, that will take you directly to the account record by clicking that, opening it up as a hyperlink. Um, in terms of populating that, that would be manual. What we can do is we can talk to you about the idea of using make.com. 
Um, a lot of partners are now looking towards middleware and make.com and Zapier and what have you. We partner directly with make to be able to do things outside of monday.com functionality. A connection to NetSuite uh, ERP is not native within the monday.com ecosphere, but we have used make.com to connect various things such as um, HubSpot, for example, people using HubSpot or they're using Zero or what have you, connecting quotes into accounts or connecting deals into contact records or even mail, um, mail marketing automations. So if you would like to discuss something like that, where you have NetSuite and you have your contacts, and you want to connect them automatically, make.com will be able to do it. Just say this account, this contact is connected to this account, populate this link in here, and then anyone who needs to just jump into NetSuite and see the data, they can click into that link. Furthermore, if you want to pull your NetSuite data automatically into monday.com and create accounts record based on your NetSuite data, that is something we can do as well. And you'd be mirroring between the two systems. So people who don't have access to NetSuite can get a view within monday.com. Perfect. Hopefully that's answered your question. Um, if you have any more, let Sam or Louis know and they can um, they can um, sort that out for you. What I'll do is I will uh, jump into the leads board. Go in here. And we're gonna be looking back at that overview and seeing what's going on here and seeing some of the aspects about this. Oh, blimey, we got all the way to qualified. Did I open? Oh, I opened, that's why. Let's go back to show them. We can see what stage we are at here, this little funnel. Good, unqualified, contacted, or closed, or what have you. We can see our emails and activities. We can see our lead info. So this is a really good view because it, instead of having to look at things horizontally, like I know a lot of sales teams don't really do horizontal and they don't do spreadsheets, you can see things in a vertical manner. So I can go into lead info and I can change things here. I can go attempted to contact. I can change the account name or the mobile or lead added. I can change that if I need to. I can change the name, more fat rather than more fat. There we are. I can change a lot of information in here. This is a really useful view and it's really good for, for uh, your sales team because instead of looking at the, the horizontal, they could be looking at the vertical. It looks a lot better. But where this view gets a lot of power is actually where we have the, uh, where we have the uh, connections to the accounts board or the deals board and seeing everything together in one place. What we'll do actually is, Louise, that's a very good question. Um, the idea of forwarding emails comes up and it's actually in this view that we can explore that with our emails and activities view. Let's say we're talking to a lead. What I'm gonna do actually is I'm actually gonna put uh, Louis in again as a lead. Louis, Louis, there we go, oh, Greaves. And what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to talk to Louis via emails in monday.com at enable.services, there we go. So when it comes to forwarding stuff into monday.com, um, there are several ways of doing so with emails. Um, what you can do is actually you can create items via email with the setting of uh, uh, create items via email. So you can email to board and then you create an item and stuff. This is used not, not as much as, as, as people um, do these days, but this is used. What you're actually looking for in CRM is actually to keep your email contact with a client together in one place to make sure you're happy. Uh, perfect. So what you would want to do is keep your um, contact very close as you are talking to someone. So if I'm talking to Louis, for example, what I can do in monday.com is instead of doing it on my emails or forwarding emails in or logging in via automations or copy pasting huge chunks of text, I can actually email Louis directly by connecting my emails into monday.com, which I have done uh, earlier today. And I can hit net add new email and I can say, uh, dear Louis, <clears throat> thank you for contacting us. Please uh, tell me me what you're looking for 
Perfect. And then we can hit send. So what I've done is I've actually sent an email. Uh, no, we're good. We're good. Monday.com. Thank you very much. Thank you for the help. Thank you for the assistance. Yeah, don't need that. Lovely. I've sent an email to Louis. What I'm going to do is actually I'm going to go into my Gmail. And I'm going to show you that sent email from my Gmail. I can also see it's not opened yet. Uh, hopefully, Louis will open it soon um, and make sure that he uh, is responding to me because that's what we want. We want our leads to respond to us so we can get on with what we need to be doing. What I'm going to do is I'm going to jump into my sent box and make sure we can see it. So if I just pop down here, what we should be able to see is that I have sent out an email to Louis from Monday and it's jumped onto my Gmail and actually sent it out um, to, to Louis. Oh, God. I wonder what that noise was. God, that scared me. Um, so I've sent that email out and that's gone to Louis, which is really good. And hopefully we'll get a reply back. Lovely job. Just checking something on the other monitor. So you don't need to work outside of Monday.com um, with your in terms of emails. You can do so within Monday.com with the sales CRM feature, emails and activities. So I've just sent um, an email to Louis. It says powered by Monday sales CRM, but we can get rid of that by hiding branding, uh, email branding. I can turn that on, remove branding. There we go. So no, we don't see the branding, what have you. Wondering what that noise is because it's it's a very very strange noise. There we go. I might just be Zoom. Um, so I've sent out that email to Louis. If I don't want to do that in Monday.com, but I want to um, make sure it's logged in Monday, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my Gmail. I'm going to open it up full screen. Good. Let's not show anything apart from this email. And I can go, uh, Louis, there we go. I can say, hi, Louis. Did you get my last email? Perfect. So I'm going to send that off screen because I don't want to, I was jumping into my email box. But I'll go into send and let you know that it's been sent. Just want to make sure I did go to the right, Louis, because sometimes I go to the, yeah, I went to the right, Louis. Perfect. So that's gone to uh, Louis, and that's been in, in my sent. Did you get my last email? I sent that out. Now, I didn't send that via Monday.com. Lovely job. I didn't send that to uh, Monday.com, but what I did, because I'm connected into Monday and my emails are connected into Monday, what it'll actually do is it'll log in here separately. So I won't have to send my emails in and out of uh, Monday.com itself. We can actually see a, a reply that's just coming from Louis. We are looking for a light shot CRM to, to enable us uh, to level up our sales process. Many thanks. Perfect. I can reply here in uh, Monday sales CRM. Or I could reply in Gmail itself. And uh, I don't have to live in Monday Sales CRM to do all my emails. I can do it in Gmail itself. Let me go back to my Gmail. Let me open it up. Perfect. Hi, Alex. Thank you, Alex. We are looking for a light touch CRM to help us enable our sales process. Perfect. I can do a quick reply here. I could go, no worries. Give me a call, or I'll give you a call. It's a bit better. I'll give you a call. Expecting someone to call me is very impolite, terribly impolite. I'm going to send that now. I'm doing it in Gmail. I'm not sending it in Monday, which is good. So I will now send that. There we are. Hit send. And because I haven't sent it in Monday.com, but I have indeed sent it, what eventually will happen is that Monday.com will see that I've sent it via my Gmail and it will keep the thread going within Monday.com. So I don't have to use Monday.com as my personal back and forth email system. Monday.com itself will just log the emails that I send in and out. There you go. No worries. I'll give you a call. So we can see everything that's been happening with Louis. I remove email tracking because I have I've done it directly through my Gmail account, but it allows me to keep email conversations very centralized in monday.com i'm not going out to outlook i'm not going out to gmail and this activity is shared amongst the account so other salespeople can go in they can see emails that have gone in and out so i don't have to tear that away 
uh, to anything else. Monday.com is compatible with Office 365. Um, I've connected my Gmail. Let me change this. Uh, settings, accounts. You can add Outlook as well. So you don't, it doesn't have to be Gmail. It could be Outlook at the same time. Each salesperson would go on here. They would log their um, their email. They could log their activities. And then each person could see what everyone else has been saying. And that activity, as we saw with moving the update, that will go through with the contact as well. So if I move Louis, move him to contacts, wait for him to go off the board, going to go into the contacts board, and we should have a new Louis at the very bottom here. And I go in here, and I can see my overview. Let's go out of settings. And there's all of the emails that we've just been having with Louis. It's come with us, which is really good. So we know what's going on. Can we schedule a meeting for next week? Perfect. Awesome. So that's where my emails have been going. So hopefully that gives you a good idea um, what happened with our emails and activities. Yes, exactly. Multiple people can use different leads. Um, per email, though, so I can't use Louis' email address to reply to a lead. I can use my own, but I can't use uh, Louis' email address to reply to a lead. So each person's email address is relevant to their monday.com account and with that they can reply to lead so if i was talking to louis and then rebecca was talking to louis she can't reply as me she can't jump on my thread as in she, same she can't jump into my outlook but she can send her own email and go oh louis off or can i assist with this or i saw you were talking to louis about this and then open her own thread which will all be logged in emails and activities as well but louis has asked for a meeting Hi, perfect. Can we schedule a meeting for next week? Awesome. Okay, so I need to log a meeting for Louis and make sure I'm happy with, with meetings. Monday.com's got a great new system with its activities board. It's actually the board we haven't really spoken about yet, which is down here. What we want to do, actually, is we want to book in a meeting with Louis. So I'm going to go back onto the contacts because Louis is a contact now and he's scared, he wants to schedule a meeting. Perfect. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my emails and activities and add a new activity for a meeting. I'm going to book it. And let's see, what do I want? I want an hour meeting and I want it to start at, let's say, five o'clock is a bit late. Uh, I don't know about you, Louis, but I you know, don't really want to meet meeting five till six. Uh, let's do one till two, just after lunch. Perfect. Uh, let's save the date. Lovely job. Good. And I'm going to call it uh, follow. I'm just going to say this is a follow up meeting to discuss the work that needs to be done. Awesome. Going to add that. Lovely job. As you can see, I've got the meeting down here. It's in emails and activities. I can see one to two, the follow-up meeting to discuss when it needs to be done. Perfect. And if I now go on to my activities board, what this will allow me to do is it'll go into the activities and I can actually see that that new meeting has been created. Louis Hargreaves meeting. Perfect. Really good. I know what it's all about. Activity info. I can see all the emails that have been happening in the activities. I can see it's the follow-up meeting. Perfect. I can see where it's come from, what board it's come from, uh, what part it's come from. Perfect. And it's connected to Louis. So what I can do with this, I can actually schedule in activities such as meetings and calls. I can also report on it as well. It's put me as the owner because what I've done is that I've said that I'm going to be the one doing it. So it's taken my user and it's assigned me as the owner. And so then sales managers can then report on how many meetings and activities have been happening each month. We can see the activity types, monthly activities that were done by account. We can even stack this. So I can stack this by uh, owner. So I can see in the month of November, and let's not do month, let's do week. Joe's killing it this week. Oh, my God. Joe's absolutely killing it. Well, that's why he's our, our head of sales. But Joe has got two meetings booked in this week, and I've got uh, one, one meeting, and I had two meetings last week as well. Yes, Joe, the uh, recording for the webinar will be shared. We'll be putting it on socials. We'll also be cutting out little snippets so you can understand uh, little bite-sized chunks of what we've been speaking about. 
so we're reporting on our activities as well. So we know what our salespeople are doing, when they're doing it. We can feed these into calendars if we need to, like your Outlook calendar, like your Microsoft calendar or your Gmail calendar. So we know what activities are happening and we can give like a sort of summary of what's going on. So we've talked about our contacts. We've talked about our leads and our activities um, and how we log them and what's going on and what our emails are happening. What I wanted to touch on is the centralization of that data in monday.com. Because I've been jumping into leads and looking at it. I've been jumping into deals and looking at it and our contacts and looking at it. Let's go to the highest level of our CRM. And the highest level should be our accounts. It's our accounts where we see all of the information. If I go to our accounts board where I've got people connected and I've got deals connected and empath, for example. Uh, let's not do empath. Let's do enable because we've got emails and activities. If I jump on and I open enables.services and I see what's going on, what I should be able to see is that I haven't also connected the other Louis. We've got an imposter in here. Hold on, let me get rid of him and let's get the actual Louis, the one at the bottom, this one. There we go. If I jump into the emails and activities here for our account, even though it's not been happening on the account level, I can see all the emails that have been happening at an account level. Because Louis is connected as a contact. Perfect. No worries. So just check in the chat. Um, so Louis is connected in here as a contact. Now I've got deals on here as well. Let's go to deals. Uh, let's see what deals we've got. So we've got new deal Alex Fry. Let's say I'm on deals. New deal Alex Fry. Let's do uh, an emails activities. Let's do a new activity and let's do a note. Um, this, this, not capitals, this, need, not in capitals, I said, there we go. This needs to go to David to check or credit or, or, or something to that effect. I'll create a nice little note in there and that will go into my emails and activities. That is for this, this specific deal. And then I'll also add a new activity for a call summary. And I had a call. Oh, I don't know, yesterday at uh, not midnight. Did not have a call at midnight. That is not my not my intention. Call for half an hour at 2 till 3.30. Went, well, need to discuss next steps. Perfect. I've now got deal activity against this particular deal. It's connected to me, Alex, who is in, then connected to the account. Now, if I go to enable.services and I look at the emails and activities, what we should be able to see is we should be able to see that I've got things to do with deal. So this needs to be go to David for a credit check, deals, activities, Alex's deal. This is the Louis email. This is the Louis email, another Louis email. Thank you for contacting us. Um, I've got the uh, recording of the meeting and what was being discussed on the meeting, follow up meeting for Louis. And I've also got the uh, deal note which I created against Alex. So I've got this entire sort of like timeline of all the contacts connected to that account. So your sales team doesn't have to be just looking on the leads board or they don't have to just be looking on the deals board or they don't have, just have to be looking on the accounts. As long as there is a connection, and that's why I highlighted connections are so important, um, it's really crucial that you keep those connections strict and uh, together for all of your different uh, contacts and that those connections will then foster an understanding of where you are in terms of your calls, your meetings, uh, your notes, that will all be together in your emails and activities. And again, the emails that we logged, uh, absolutely, yeah. Um, so all of the emails and everything that's been logged, that will be actually in the highest level, the accounts level. So that's an understanding that you might have is that if you are creating extra boards, like say you've got a deals board, but you also have an opportunities board and you want to create a new board for opportunities. So a deal then moves up to an opportunity. Make sure that you are keeping those connections. If you're connecting a contact to, um, if you're connecting a deal to a contact, for example, when you then create an opportunity, you want that connection to remain. I'll show you that rather quickly, actually, just to make sure we're happy. Let's say we want a new board and we want it to be uh, opportunities. 
There we go. You want to make sure that if you have a connection to uh, the contacts board, that you make sure you remain with that connection. So connect to board column. And I'd like to connect to the contacts. Good job. Perfect. So if I move a deal into an opportunity, move this, this could be automated. I'm just going to do it manually quickly. And I've got a new board for opportunities. There we go. If I move it over, what we should see is that when we move it over, our connection to the contact remains as we move the deal to the opportunities board as well. So we still have that connection. So if we are splitting out our sales pipeline even further, and we have deals in one board and opportunities in another, we are still having that, that connection, that connected trail back to the contact, back to the account. So we still have that understanding centralized of where we are in the process of contacting them. Everyone's working together. We've got um, SDRs looking in the leads board and dealing with leads. We've got um, high level salespeople working in the, the uh, opportunities board and managing new deals and what have you. And then a manager can just go to the accounts record, look at the account and see everything to do with it in one centralized space. Not only does it do it for emails and activities, I can also see the information according to related contacts as well. So for the related contacts for enable services, I can see Alex and Louis are a part of that record. If I go down to Empath and I go here and I go down, I can see that there we go. Bobby and Sharon are a part of Empath as well. So it's those connections that are really important. And it does take people a while to sort of understand connected to ball columns and mirror columns and how they work. But hopefully you've got an understanding of why they're very important, why the sales CRM package um, does a very great job of connecting things together and making sure that um, all of your connections are built in um, at the very uh, start of your journey into the section. Um, and you can populate them manually, but if you would like to populate them in a more of an automated fashion, you can do with monday.com match automations, and you can do with um, creation automations, as we can see where we're moving a, a lead to a contact and then we're creating the deal automatically.